Hi, welcome to Bookie, which unlock big ideas from world bestsellers in audio, text, and mind map. Please download Bookie at Apple Store or Google Play with more features. Get your free mind snack now. Today we will unlock the book The Emotional Life of Your Brain. You've probably experienced flight delays. If you paid attention to the passengers around you, you would see that they'd react differently to flight delays. Some would be listening to music with headphones on, completely ignoring the situation around them. Some would be grumbling, walking into the departure lounge in a huff after hearing the news of delay. Some would calmly but firmly demand to be rerouted immediately. And some would angrily and loudly question the staff. The differences in how people react to a flight delay have much to do with their emotional style. Richard J. Davidson, a psychologist and neuroscientist proposed emotional style model in this book, the first theory of human emotions based on modern neuroscience. Through rigorous experiments and data analysis, Davidson puts forward that emotional style comprises six dimensions, and each of them is the result of a particular pattern of brain activity. The six dimensions introduced in the book give us a clear picture of our emotional style, which plays a major role in every aspect of our lives, including our physical health. The good news is emotional style is malleable, which means that we can shape it to work to our advantage. This book was authored by Richard J. Davidson and Sharon Begley. Richard J. Davidson, a renowned psychologist and neuroscientist, received his PhD in psychology from Harvard University and is a professor of psychology and psychiatry at the University of Wisconsin Madison. Sharon Begley is a popular science writer who writes full time for the science columns of the Wall Street Journal and Newsweek throughout the year. In this bookie, we will unlock the essence of the book through the following three parts. Part 1, About Emotional Style Part 2, How Emotional Style Affects Our Life and Health Part 3, How to Reshape Your Emotional Style Let's start with the first part and learn about emotional style. The discovery of emotional style stems from an experiment on the brain and emotions carried out by Davidson. He put electrode caps on the participants to collect brain signals and had the participants watch four video clips, two of which made people feel happy and cheerful, and the other two triggered disgust and fear. From this experiment, Davidson found that when the participants smiled out of heartfelt joy, the brain showed a greater activity signal on the left prefrontal cortex. On the other hand, when the participants feel fear and disgust, the right prefrontal cortex is more activated. In other words, different emotions are the results of different patterns of brain activity. However, this analysis only showed the average level of brain activity of the two groups of participants. Another way of looking at the data piqued Davidson's interest more. He found that different people while watching the same video had varying levels of activity in their prefrontal cortex. It was these individual differences that led Davidson to explore emotional style through a series of studies. According to this theory, everyone's emotional style can be explained with the six basic dimensions that comprise it. Let's talk about them one by one. The first one is the resilience dimension, referring to how quickly or slowly you recover from adversity. For the same adverse experience, different people recover at different speed of recovery. People who can regulate their negative emotions in a short time are fast to recover. On the contrary, people who take a long time to adjust their emotions are slow to recover. Of course, when we are faced with different things, the levels of the negative emotions that arise can vary. For example, if a vending machine eats your money and doesn't give you the bag of chips you wanted, the negative emotions caused by this event may be gone in a few minutes. But if you lose someone dear to you, you may be drowned in negative emotions for months, or even longer. This is because how important the matter is to you also determines how quickly or slowly you recover from negative emotions. The second one is the outlook dimension, which refers to how long your positive emotions can last, or whether you can consistently approach life with an optimistic attitude. Some people always seem to be actively engaged and optimistic no matter what circumstances they are in, 
as if nothing can bother them. Such people are the positive type. On the contrary, some people will pick out faults no matter how positive the circumstance they encounter. Even if something makes them feel happy, these happy feelings will pass away in a flash. These people belong to negative type. Third, the social intuition dimension. It refers to the ability to perceive another person's thoughts from their various behaviors when you interact with them. Have you ever encountered a person who constantly talks to you without noticing that you have checked your watch several times? People like this are the puzzled type who cannot perceive social signals other than words. On the contrary, some people are socially intuitive. By noticing details such as speaking tone and speed, gestures, and facial expressions, they can determine whether the other person wants to continue talking to you or be left alone, and respond appropriately. Fourth, the self-awareness dimension. It refers to how sensitively you perceive bodily feelings, which put you in touch with your emotions. Sometimes people are anxious, angry, or impatient, but they are not aware of it until someone asks them if something is bothering them. These people are the self-opaque type. On the other spectrum, the self-aware people are quick to recognize their emotional state and are very sensitive to the messages sent by their bodies. For example, when a self-aware person gets angry at his child, he will quickly realize that he was angry not because the child made a mistake, but because of a traffic jam on the way home, which disrupted an otherwise orderly plan, which led him to take his anger out on the child. Fifth, the sensitivity to context dimension. It refers to whether you can regulate your emotional response to different situations. For example, if a one-year-old child is relaxed when he plays in his own home, and then becomes wary in unfamiliar circumstances, we can say that the child is at the tuned-in pole of the spectrum. However, there is another group of children who exhibit the same emotional state wherever they are. These children who are less sensitive to changes in their surroundings belong to the tuned-out group of this dimension. The last one is the attention dimension which refers to your ability to block out distractions and focus on the work at hand. A focused person can talk to another person intently in a noisy party or in a crowded environment, without being distracted by various emotions around him. An unfocused person cannot concentrate on one thing in these noisy environments, and their focus will constantly change with their surroundings. These are the six dimensions that constitute emotional style, each one is a continuum with two extremes. If you're curious about your emotional style, you can refer to the questionnaire that Davidson presents in Chapter 3 of this book. All you need to do is to answer the questions based on your situation to assess where in the spectrum you fall in each of the six dimensions, which constitute your emotional style. Decades of scientific research have shown that emotions are the result of the activity in specific areas of the brain. Through years of research, Davidson has discovered the mechanisms and characteristics of the brain that correspond to each of the six emotional dimensions. Here is a brief introduction. Resilience is determined by the amount of the brain's white matter between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. The more white matter present between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala, the more resilient you are. The less white matter, the less resilient. Social intuition on the other hand is regulated through the activation of the brain's fusiform gyrus and amygdala. Higher levels of activation in the fusiform gyrus and low to moderate levels of activation in the amygdala are marks of a socially intuitive brains, and the opposite mechanism result in the aforementioned puzzled brains. The remaining four dimensions also have corresponding brain mechanisms. The levels of activity in the hippocampus and visceral nerves determine the sensitivity to context and self-awareness respectively. The higher the levels of activity in the nucleus accumbens, the more optimistic people are. And the prefrontal cortex plays a vital role in the control of selective attention. We don't mean to make you confused by telling you a bunch of scientific terms. Rather, we would like to give you a general understanding that the emotions we take for granted have a solid biological basis. Emotions are not independent from the body and brain, nor are they something that come out of nowhere. This is a common misunderstanding even among scientists. In fact, when Davidson began his research, 
his peers generally disapproved of his research direction. However, these findings all suggest that there is a tight connection between emotional style and the brain. Since emotional style is the result of brain activity, is it a genetic disposition that is determined from the moment of conception? Is it unchangeable? With this question in mind, Davidson and his team studied the behavior and brain activity of 303-year-old toddlers. The researchers had parents take the toddlers to a playroom filled with toys, and a remote-controlled robot was placed in the playroom. The robot was completely new to the kids. The eyes of the robot were flashing, its head could turn left and right, its mouth could move, and it could mimic human voices. The arrival of the robot elicited different reactions from the children. Davidson shortlisted 70 toddlers based on their responses and divided them into three groups. First, a group of shy toddlers who barely spoke to the robot and even hid their heads behind their mother's knees. Second, a group of bold toddlers who quickly ran away from their parents, played with the robot and became good friends. And a third group of toddlers who were somewhere in between neither very shy nor particularly bold, somewhere around the average. The researchers then followed up with these children when they reached nine years old. It turned out that most of them showed very noticeable changes. Some of the shy children were no longer shy, and the formerly bold kids were no longer brave. Davidson and his team found that the changed kids made up two-thirds of the total number and their brain activity patterns had also changed, as well as their temperaments and behaviors. This experiment indicates that emotional style is not fixed, but can be changed. If a shy child is given encouragement, gradually they will become fond of interacting with people. And if a bold child suffers from neglect and poor treatment, he may also change and slowly become less inclined to interact with people. That concludes the first part of this bookie. Let's review the key learning points. Emotional style comprises six dimensions, which are resilience, outlook, social intuition, self-awareness, sensitivity to context, and attention. Each of the six emotional dimensions is the result of a particular pattern of brain activity. A person's emotional style is not fixed, and it will develop and change along with the person's life experience. Today we are just sharing limited content. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. Get your free mind snack now.